a couple of weeks ago, I decided to write a letter to an organic canned food company. I asked this food company if they indeed had BPA-lined cans. And the first paragraph of this woman's letter, who represents the company, I'm not going to mention the company at this point, says, thanks for your email. We're a family-owned company. Everything we offer is made from start to finish by our own people. We do everything possible to make our products as natural, safe, and high in quality as possible. And I thought, okay, wait a minute here. We do everything possible to make our products as natural, safe, safe. I was thinking to myself, is it safe to know that a product that you are manufacturing is canned in a BPA-lined can and not to even include it on the label of your can? This is an organic company. And that was troubling to me. How do you feel about that? Why are we not seeing on cans that these cans are lined with BPA if they are? Almost all canned foods, and that includes canned fruits and vegetables, soup, tomato products, as well as canned beverages like soda and beer, all of them universally contain BPA in the epoxy resin lining of the can, according to both the BPA manufacturing industry as well as the North American trade group who um, covers metal packaging. So I think we should just assume that all metal cans are lined with BPA unless they state otherwise. The way that organic is defined, it does not address the issue of bisphenol A. It's not being used as a pesticide um, or a preservative in the cans. It's actually being used um, in the lining as a part of the food packaging. And uh, we don't require any labeling of any ingredient that's used in food packaging. There are a number of other chemicals that we're also concerned about that are used in food packaging that are also endocrine-disrupting chemicals. So it's not just BPA that's being used in our food packaging that we're concerned about. She says later in the letter that the Canadian government has suggested that BPA is toxic. This particular organic food company knows that at least the Canadian government has stated this chemical is toxic, yet they have not even included it on their packaging. Obviously, there are other chemicals, but in this particular instance, it just seemed to me to be very disappointing. Yeah, I agree. It is disappointing. But um, I think it's also true that the replacement of BPA in can lining has, is a difficult issue to overcome. There, um, there are not widely available alternatives yet for the use in food cans. Um, there is, I, I'm not sure which company you were talking with, but there is another organic food company that I know of, whom I also won't name here, does have BPA-free linings in their food cans, especially for their bean products but they haven't yeah. been able to use that application in their tomato-based products because it, it hasn't with the shelf life quality test. I know that there is also a lot of interest in developing alternatives. And at least for infant formula, that has worked. You know, so Many of the liquid infant formula makers have advertised on their website that their packaging is BPA-free. Of course, the problem is that we don't always know what the alternative is that's being used, which is why NRDC and other groups have been advocating for more comprehensive chemical policy reform, which would ensure that chemicals that are being introduced into the marketplace, whether it's in our food packaging, in our toys, in our cosmetics, you know, where, wherever it is, that at least someone has looked to see if this chemical is toxic before it's being put into commerce. Why can't these canned goods be put into bottles? You mean like a glass bottle? Yeah, like a glass bottle. I suppose that they could. They have to undergo a sterilization or pasturation process, but it seems to me that there could be alternative forms of packaging that would work just as well and would be as accepted by the consumer. We often recommend to people that instead of buying canned food that you buy frozen or fresh food, and that way you don't have to deal with this issue of whether or not the can line contains bisphenol A and whether or not the food is acidic enough to cause leaching of more BPA than a different type. I read that the Food and Drug Administration back in August said that it's reviewing new studies on bisphenol A and expects to rule by November 30th whether the chemical is safe for use in food and beverage containers. How do you feel about this? Do you feel like the Food and Drug Administration is going in a positive direction in terms of either banning this or requiring the company put this product contains a BPA liner on it? We were happy that the FDA agreed to reopen their evaluation and address many of the criticisms, uh, both from the public and from the scientists who evaluated their work. I do have some concerns about the process that is ongoing there. They seem to be focusing only on studies which focus on 
reproductive and developmental outcomes. They're not, it appears, to be focusing on metabolic and obesity outcomes, which of course are of huge concern to the U.S. population. But they're relying on a set of evaluations that were done by the National Toxicology Program, which um, were by definition uh, focused just on development and reproduction. And I think it's a little bit too narrowly focused of the FDA to just be honing in on those endpoints to the exception of all the other endpoints. I'm also not certain that on November 30th we're going to have a final word on this. I think the FDA, especially the new administration, has had a lot to deal with. You know, besides BPA, they're also dealing with H1N1 and food recalls, and the new staff have really had to take on quite a few issues all at once. And uh, the BPA issue is very complicated. And, you know, we've had some meetings with them where the indication has been that this is an ongoing process and they're taking it very seriously, but it's also one in which they have to incorporate a lot of information. What can the public do to attempt to get this BPA chemical banned altogether? Really what we need is not just a ban on bisphenol A, but we need to know that whatever is replacing bisphenol A, whether it's in a new bottle that you take in your backpack or on a hike, or whether it's a new baby bottle, or whether it's a new application in food cans, you want to know that that chemical is safe. You don't want to replace one toxic chemical with another. And so what we really need is for the public to get in support of chemical policy reform. The EPA Administrator, Lisa Jackson, just yesterday announced that this is going to be a priority for the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency. They laid out a set of principles, which are very much in line with uh, what NRDC and other environmental groups are calling for, and that is that before chemicals are put into commerce, and that includes not just new chemicals, but all of the 80,000 chemicals which have already been put into production, will have to undergo an assessment that requires information about basic toxicology information which would include evidence of reproductive developmental harm or cancer, and that the burden will be on the people producing the chemicals to prove that their chemical is safe before it's introduced. You know, BPA is one example, but there are many other chemicals out there, including other chemicals that are found in our food, which really have never been tested for their toxicity. And so Mm -hmm. we'd like people to be, you know, writing to their congressperson and encouraging them to support this legislation, which will be introduced hopefully sometime this fall by Senator Lautenberg. It's going to be the Toxic Substances Control Act that's going to be reformed. I'm not sure what it will be called yet. What are some other chemicals we might want to do some research on that could be used readily in our food supply? So phthalates are another group of chemicals which are approved for food packaging and other applications. And our U.S. agencies who have studied this chemical, including the National Toxicology Program and the EPA, have stated that food is probably the major source of exposure for most Americans. And so that's definitely a chemical that we have been working on phasing out in things like air fresheners and children's toys, but really we're concerned about exposures that are happening from food. We're also working on some of the chemicals that are used as antimicrobials, more so in personal care products, things like triclosan and triclocarban, which are often found in things like hand soaps and hand sanitizers to promote disinfection, when really they don't work any better than regular soap and water, and these chemicals are also endocrine disruptors. And finally, we're also working on flame retardants, which are not directly added to food, but often end up contaminating food because of their widespread contamination throughout the environment. Thank you for your wonderful work, and thank you, NRDC, for doing what you're doing. You're helping the world tremendously. Thank you, Sarah, and we'll speak with you soon. Okay. Thanks. Bye.